Today's show is sponsored by the ABV Barrel Shop. The ABV Barrel Shop is located in the St. Louis metro community of Arnold, Missouri, and is the world's first single barrel only liquor store. This business is owned and operated by Steve Akeley and Jim Fosnott. Head over to abvbarrelshop.com to sign up for their email and text distribution list. That way you'll know what they have in stock, what classes are coming up, and what barrel picks they have in the works. We are also sponsored by The Bar to Go. The Bar to Go offers a fully customizable carrying case that allows you to take your favorite distilled spirits or cocktail ingredients with you. Whether you're looking for yourself, a customized gift, or logo items for your business or event, The Bar to Go can help. Check them out at thebartogo.com. Use the number two when you type out The Bar to Go. Did you know Neely Family Distillery now ships its popular distilled spirits directly to you? To order, simply call 859-394-3258. Tell them the ABV Network sent you. And now, on to the show. Let's drink! Welcome to the Bourbon Daily, the podcast about everything bourbon delivered to you every day of the week. Today we discuss how much fake bourbon is likely out there and where it's going. My name is Miss Becca Sue. Please join me in welcoming my co-host Steve Akeley, along with our special guests, Tim Swyatt, Bo Cumberland, and Ryan Thompson. Hey gang, what's up? What's up, guys? Oh, so yeah, we're going to have some fun today. We're going to be talking about fake bourbon. Hopefully none of us have ever been victims of this. I guess we'll never really know. We're not going to be able to drill down to that. But uh, we're going to talk a little bit about what's going on in the world right now and, uh, you know, what you can do to protect yourself. We'll uh, we'll talk about that as well. But we'll get to that after the break. For right now, Becca said there's something she wanted to talk about. What is that, Becca? Yes. Yeah, so I was wondering if you guys consider anything below 15% ABV alcohol. I say that because, you know, I drink wine, not all the time, but I would um there's you know the different seltzers there's different things that are just low proof and like do you really consider that alcohol or are you like i'm just having some i'm just having some wine what are you why are you looking at me funny you're like i'm just having you know whatever it is and it's like it's, it's pretty low proof does that really count as alcohol to you guys <laughs> no it's like a warm-up game is what it is uh-huh. I, I, yeah. I, I don't i don't count it like and it depends on the situation like you're going into are you you got an important, like you're going to be around a lot of important people. You got something happening and then, uh, come in shit faced on beer. I'll just drink the, beer. Just the day in general. Sometimes uh, like all right. I'm going to have all a little right. bit of wine. It's fuck it. It's one o'clock. I don't work. It's not like I'm really drinking. If I was really drinking, I'd have a Glen Karen, but instead it's a glass of wine. So it's like not water really drinking. I'm just hydrating at that point. Okay. Let's, well, I guess clarify for the viewers here. Your glass of wine, Becca, that I can see here is like a coffee cup of wine. So oh, yeah. I, uh, technically, a wine glass. That's, I'm sixteen ounces at least of wine, right? That's okay. So this is what we're talking about. Okay. Yeah. I'm staying hydrated, like I just said. I like <laughs> this is true. It is hot out, and I need to stay hydrated. So wh- I, if this was well, a glass of water, you wouldn't go, "Wow, saying- your water sure is full." <laughs> Staying hydrated might be a little bit of a stretch, but you're certainly not getting your liver uh, as much workout as it does on a daily basis. Let's put it that way. Maybe. You're giving your liver a, a break, but I don't know about staying I, 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 I don't know what the liver's saying about that. Uh, that's a lot. That's a big glass of wine, and I'm sure that's not the only one she's had today. So, uh, <laughs> so there's yeah, that, I guess. Yeah. And look, look how much she drank. Her, hold your glass up again. Look how much she drank in two drinks. I mean. Wow, well, good. She knows how to take a sip. <laughs> <laughs> that glass we just talked about that was full is now halfway empty. So what I don't like when people drink anything and they they put the glass up to their lips and they barely they have like one minuscule milliliter out of the glass like mm, that's good and they get I'm like no drink a fucking sip would you like Becca Sue's doing with her wine lip right now? Yeah, thank you, Ryan. Yes. Okay. I needed a little bit of. That's a different here. small talk, yes. but yeah, yeah, I, I get that. So <laughs> I'm trying I, to have know. a little sip here, and I'm you know it's, oh. Right. Enjoy it, right? Come on. Yeah. Well, what are you trying to do here? <laughs> yeah. What do you, uh, Bo, what do you think, man? Uh, uh, does, well, wine, I, does wine or just like a regular beer count as alcohol? I, I don't know. I'm with Ryan, though. I'm, I'm not a sipper of anything. Like, I guzzle everything that I drink. And so, 
uh, even at 15% ABV, I think that can put like eventually get me in trouble if I'm just guzzling right. stuff. So, I mean, I see what you're saying though, Becca Sue, but, but I, I, I mean, it'd be funny to see well, a boat I mean, drunk on some wine. <laughs> yes. I mean, I don't I, get, I do think it would be. I don't generally drink a bunch of whiskey like before five o'clock, but I'll drink wine or like these noodle things. I know Steve will, you know, give me shit. This is not a seltzer. This is really just. It's just a vodka, it's a vodka water. There's no carbonation. Hmm. And so that is, this is actually hydrating. Yes. It's, it's, just a, it's just a vodka water, and it's 4.5% alcohol, and it just tastes like a flavored water. Uh, so I really uh, feel hydrated after I drink one of these. terrible. Sounds That's terrible. That's pretty good. Yes. This is so against your like, brand. Yeah. Like one of those things or like beer. I won't like I won't drink one or two of those. I'll drink 10 or 20 of them and cuz I just guzzle and then it's like over at that point. Mm -hmm, <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. And I drink them fast like one like popping one when I'm finished with the other one. Right. And then <laughs> yeah. Those don't cause gout, do they? That would go, and then to blame me for saying something. Why would Bo you say get that? gout tomorrow, and then he'll. Be I, I'm just. I was just about to say. I'm <laughs> gonna get gout tomorrow. That's what happened last time. We're like, hey, have you had gout uh, recently? And he said, have, oh, it's been great. And uh, literally the next day, he couldn't fucking walk. You bastard! I haven't had gout since I was in Colorado, but now thanks to you, I'm gonna get. Gout. <laughs> <laughs> you asshole. <laughs> Steve's fault. It's my fault. I'm oh, sure. Sure. All right. My foot's well, starting to hurt right now. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Get the cherry juice. Get the cherry juice. All right. It's time to drink. What is everyone drinking? Let's start with Ryan. Ryan, what do you got there, man? Well, it's uh, certainly not going to win the cork pot, but that's nothing new because I don't think I've won one in my life. So I'm just going to start out with a little mellow corn tonight. Sure. Get it going here. Get it Good going. Stuff. And a little screw top. So. There's right. my cork pop. There you go. There you go. All right. <laughs> Becca is next. Becca, what do you got? What are you um, chasing that wine with? What am I going to chase my wine with tonight um, is some Kings County. Um, this is just their straight bourbon whiskey. Okay. Oh, that was good. That was, that's probably going to be enough. We'll see though. We'll see how this plays out. Uh, Bo, you're next. All right. Well, since our topic tonight is fake bourbon, and I don't think I have any. I hope I don't. But I'm going to drink some Ezra Brooks, which is a fake person. So it's close uh -huh. enough, right? Right. All right, here we go. It's the cast strength uh, single barrel, by the way. Okay. What? He just hit it against the desk. Is all he did. All he did. <laughs> here you go. There's my, there's my cork pot. That's good yeah. It, it, was, it wasn't knocks. anything. Nothing yeah, happened. Just knocks. All right. All right, uh, I've got the Yellowstone, a barrel pick from the ABV Barrel Shop. Pretty full, so I'm, I'm hopeful for this one. So here we go. Swide on the set, which is, by the way, is like a catchphrase that uh, is big in the barrel shop right now. Everybody watch this. <laughs> Swide on the set. <laughs> All right, here we go. Uh, mine was decent. Uh, definitely uh, the best second place so far. I mean, uh, it was cute. No one else it was cute. It was really right. cute. It was like... <laughs> Yes, yeah, it was. It was, it was, cute, it was uh, not. It's not going to take the lead, uh, obviously. But uh, Becca has the lead. Tim still has to go, so we'll just. just call no, it. I yeah. win. Yeah, Becca wins. exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Tim, great cork pop. All right, now, hey, this is a uh, tenth Mountain American single malt, uh, hey, batch well. number one that uh, Steve Akeley pushed on me while we're leaving the ABV barrel shop. Oh, that was uh, a hey, one. How about if I throw this one in there for you too? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fantastic. I'm going to pick that one up. Yep. I'm looking for this is the first time I hope this is a fresh cork pop to get me oh, off on the right know, spot. Yeah, that's okay. So we uh, we'll take a time out here before you before you pop that. Don't let me talk over you. For years, we heard every excuse in the book from Lenny. It's the altitude. Someone talked over his cork pops. Uh, uh, we just didn't hear it. We're, we're against him. Small now, hands. What, he's, what he recently just small hands. What he recently discovered <laughs> was new bottles pop better so each time uh, fi on a friday we'll do five shows he gets five new bottles he and he's winning all these cork pops which suddenly the altitude isn't an issue anymore he so he's spending a fortune but he's winning cork pops and then i i don't <laughs> again I, he probably just throws the bourbon away after we go go behind Truth. deer hammer he records at uh at his warehouse so re go behind deer hammer in the trash can i'm sure there's you know, <laughs> bottles and I bottles. Bet he's just throwing seven eight full <laughs> bottles yes yeah he's yeah. like oh, well, if this... you watch closely when you see him after he takes his sip he just looks around and yeets it right over his shoulder he off does. the balcony. He does. <laughs> so, yeah. 
He d- he always I wish there was a that. collection yeah. bin. It'd be a hell of an infinity barrel for him. Because he's not at home, so he always is uh, conscious of he has to drive home. I'm sure he's been he maybe had a few during the day too. So he's a yeah, he's a conscious drinker. So it's good. That's good. Safety first, folks. Tim, right. uh, safety first. It's up to you. You got a new bottle. All Let's right. see what happens. Let's we'll see if see you can be like here. Yeah, exactly. Let's see what happens. All right, come on now, Ted's Mountain. <laughs> Did you go? He went. <laughs> uh, oh, I, I thought. I beat him with the twist off, actually. So <laughs> <laughs> it was a dead last. It night. was a nice cork pop on this side. My, oh, I yeah. can't. I, 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 These I, Zoom I, audio settings are for losers. It's <laughs> horse shit. Yeah. Yeah. Tim, it was it. bottled. It was bottled at altitude. So let's go with that, huh? Yeah. Yeah. It was bottled at high altitude. Yes, yes. I'm at lower altitude, so therefore there's no pressure difference or anything <laughs> sure, like that. Sure, uh, yeah. I believe in the science, right? You need to talk to Katie Joyce. She's figured out the Zoom settings. Now it takes 15 minutes for her to get this set up just to do a cork pop, so we have to factor that in when we're recording with Katie now. But yeah, Wait, she, wins. she goes last. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so cheers, gang. Cheers, cheers. everyone. All right, well, we're going to take a quick break. And then when we come back, we're going to be talking about fake bourbon. It seems to be in the news a lot these days. We'll get to that in just a few. Let's talk about the people who make these shows happen. First up is the ABV Barrel Shop. It is the most unique shopping experience in the world of bourbon as the ABV Barrel Shop only sells single barrels, owners Steve Akeley and Jim Fosnott select. With over 100 distilleries on board to sell us barrels, we are home to the most unique and diverse barrel pick selections in the bourbon world. By signing up for our email, you will always know what we have in stock. In addition to the single barrels, we'll have a gift shop featuring ABV Barrel Shop as well as ABV Network merchandise. We are partnering with vendors like Art Eatables and Old Man Bay Signs to bring you unique items you can't find anywhere else. We will also have a 24C classroom where we are offering educational and fun classes like Breakfast and Bourbon, a series where we pair donuts and bourbon, customer barrel picks, and opportunities to learn from master distillers and other bourbon dignitaries. Best of all, we feature a tasting bar where you can try before you buy. All of this is located in the St. Louis metro community of Arnold, Missouri. If you are in the St. Louis area, please stop by to say hi. If you're traveling in from outside the area, please take advantage of our hotel rates with the Drury Inn and Pear Tree Inn less than a mile from our shop. This can be done via the links in our Visit St. Louis section on our website. Head over to abvbarrelshop.com to plan your trip. The ABV Barrel Shop, it's where single barrels live. Hi, this is Steve Akeley, owner of the ABV Network. We're sponsored by the Staven Thief Society. This is where you, a bourbon enthusiast, can expand your knowledge and emerge a bourbon steward. In 2017, I completed my Executive Bourbon Steward Certification. It's the most comprehensive bourbon certification program available and connects you with an expansive network of bourbon enthusiasts and professionals. Check out the full listing of in-person and online certifications and join the Society today by enrolling at staventhief.com. Okay, let's talk about the Neely Family Distillery. In 2018, I met Royce Neely at an industry event. He started appearing on our shows and we became friends during my frequent trips to Kentucky. Today, he is amongst the leaders of young distillers, leaving their mark on the bourbon industry. A visit to Neely Family Distillery yields insight on their unique family history, why their products are special, and gives you the opportunity to taste their whiskey, moonshine, and creams. Check them out at neelyfamilydistillery.com or visit them in Sparta, Kentucky. new don't mix your grain and grapes not a good time you're listening to the bourbon daily welcome back to the bourbon daily today we're talking about fake bourbon yes we are so there seems to be a lot of fake uh bourbon going on i I mean you're hearing now in in countries where uh they have pretty elaborate setups like bottling lines and things like that where they're just pumping out fake whiskey and uh and then uh selling that and, and i guess what was one in russia of course who's 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 overlooking that i mean yeah so in russia bourbon drinks you 
<laughs> so there's a lot of the stuff going on. I, I linked uh, the, in the show notes here to one that uh, was happening in California. And this guy's, of course, you could say, well, he was selling it outside the country. Who cares? Well, you know, a lot of that stuff ends up coming back in. People are like, oh, you know what? I bought this this Pappy Van Winkle for, you know, two grand and I can sell it for four grand. So I'll buy it. So that's how this stuff ends up you know, back. Even though you think you know, Europe, that's no victimless here in the U.S. That, there's probably still victims in the U.S. from this stuff because people pay insane prices for stuff. So. Yeah, I, I mean, there seems to be just a lot of the stuff going on, and as the the prices go up and people pay the stuff, it's not going away, is it, guys? No, 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 no not until there's a validated secondary market that's going to require regulation and this, that, and the other, which we all know we don't want. Mm -hmm. But these idiots are going to force us to do it. It's that, and I think this chase for allocation, blah blah blah, this, that, and the other. This, if if the consumers don't wake up and realize that there's a lot of great whiskey out there, not made from only a few distilleries right and starts cutting that market off at the knees or we get a or you hate to say it, i mean the auction houses are great but all the all the frauds going on in the auction houses because they're buying this stuff up like crazy hand over right. fist right. and it doesn't matter there's that's it yeah yeah what what is the guesstimate on how much fake bourbon is out there is there any kind of any number out there that currently in the u.s market 67.3 percent of all bourbon is fake no i'm kidding i have no idea <laughs> it was like what <laughs> 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 I'd like to know your source, Steve. That's, 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 a, that's a gallery guy. I really want to know because we can make a lot of money. Yeah, so I'm kidding. I, I have no idea. They, you know, and um, yeah, but it, it's all happening. You know, and I think it even happens more to uh, the other thing that you have to watch out for is is vintage bourbon. But I think it happens more in the Pappy Van Winkles and the and Blantons and all those because they're they're quick turnaround. You don't have to find a specialty customer who wants that particular old whiskey. Uh, everything that is a part of that bottle can be sourced today. You know, the, the plastic neck sleeves that they got in. There's nothing to that stuff. I mean, you just got to find the, you know, a manufacturer, get the right color, and it's all heat gun put on. I mean, you could do that. I could do it at my house, uh, you know, if I wanted to do something like that. So what about eBay allowing these the the old bottles to be sold and everything oh, yeah. like that? That's there the start. Do you cut them off at the bottling part? I mean, if you really want to do some of this I stuff mean, you work those the are eBay. gonna get sold regardless of ebay like Correct. you can't you can't make someone throw away their old bottles <laughs> right oh, you can't no. like go house to house and go i heard that you just finished up your peppy ben winkle <laughs> throw it in the trash <laughs> smash the smash bottle like, smash like the you're bottle. not gonna have a police that's going around and like tell like i just saw on one of these dumb bourbon groups i'm on uh the other day someone was like does anyone want any of these old Pappy Van Winkle and like George T. Stags that I emptied out for any sort of like basis or anything. Like people were just selling them on bourbon groups. So like exactly. if it's not for like eBay. Yeah, marketplace groups. Agree. Yeah, like yeah. it's they're going to get yeah. sold regardless. I don't think that there's really much that you can do other than be aware and right. like buy from real fucking places. Like don't just be buying it from somewhere that, you know, some shady guy like named john smith sold you a bottle of pappy van winkle on facebook marketplace like maybe don't buy that right like be be a smart consumer about where you're buying stuff at because if you're buying it from a legit liquor store they shouldn't i mean they could but you have a better chance of not having a fraudulent product if it's at a, a real store right like right. a real store <laughs> well, yeah, like uh, Total Wine or whatever, whatever your local liquor store is, they're yeah. getting it from distributors and and selling it that way. Uh, hopefully, uh, I mean, there's certainly stuff where where where, where liquor stores are circumventing the rules uh, mm -hmm. because again, they're they're incented. They they have so much on the line. They got to pay their rent and their bills, and they're they're buying stuff shady and uh, with ways they shouldn't, and then selling it and uh, hoping they don't get caught. So it, it, even your liquor store, so you have to trust your retailer too. So that's a, that's another thing. Point. Yeah, so we get, system, Becky, so you can probably right. echo these same words here, but we get spammers on our Facebook page and Instagram page all the time. Oh, yeah. Saying time. that, oh, hey, I've got a couple of those bottles left on my shelf. DM me if you're interested. Yeah. I'm like, motherfucker, we just came out with those. You can only get them in our two taste rooms right now, and we just came out with them yesterday. You don't have two bottles on your shelf, I guarantee it. Right. They did right? the same thing with Old Jet when we were posting about it before we even released it. Yeah. And yeah. then they were doing it to – the posts that we put up about Thumper. They'll, they'll the go to day. individual people. They'll be like, oh, oh this is cool. I want this one. And the consumer, they'll go to a consumer they see that's commented yeah. on something and say, hey, I've got one of those. If yeah. you DM me they, and I get you. They uh, literally commented on a post about cats. 
Uh -huh. There wasn't any bottles being sold on this post about cats. Yeah. And people were like, I still got a bottle if anyone needs one. And it's like, what the fuck? Bottle of the cat? <laughs> yeah. what, right? yeah, like, what, what bottle? Like, <laughs> I want bottled thumper. Yeah, I love that cat. I'm not. Hey, do you get that on your guys? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, yeah. I was yeah, gonna right, say yeah. it's it's 500 more now. I think in yeah. the past couple of months than it ever has been. Like I, like uh, back out. Every time I comment on something for Neely, somebody comments and tells me they have a bottle of it for me. Mm -hmm. And I try. Like it. It's. I mean, it's goddamn like a you full time job. Right. Yeah. Just trying yeah. to just trying to delete them. Yeah. And, yeah. and Royce is like, what are you doing? Why are you sitting around? I'm like, I'm not sitting around. I'm trying to delete all these goddamn <laughs> posts from these motherfuckers who are just commenting shit that doesn't yeah. make any. And then here's the worst part about it is you would assume that people would know that, like, maybe this is not a legit thing. But I have people that message us and go, hey, um, was this you that reached out to me about selling the bottle? And I'm like, my name doesn't have any sort of weird asterisks in it like no that's not me that's not any of us that doesn't even have our picture on it it doesn't have anything to do with us it doesn't right. even say our name on it do not purchase from these people like i i hate that i have to tell people do no that is not us do not purchase from them yeah that is fake yeah i wonder what would happen if like one of us reaches out to hey i want one of those bottles from neely and then see what happens. Just go down the, the rabbit hole with them and then just see where they They'll go. Be like, uh, send say, me, oh, well, uh, that bottle sold, but I have XYZ or something, right? It's a bait and switch or something. Oh, I, I don't think you're getting uh, nothing, Send right? me money first. Yeah, yeah. Send, me send me the money and, uh, yeah. Or give Is me a scam. Yeah, let's, okay. uh, we'll make it real easy. Just get me a Walmart gift card and scratch mm -hmm. off the back and all that. And, right. Uh, yeah. And, they're, 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 you get nothing out of it. They're, they're, yeah. they're not trying to sell you uh, something legit. They're not going to bait and switch you. They're, they're just going to rip you off is what they gotcha. want to do. Yeah. 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 We do a, events at the shop, you know, like tastings and stuff like that. And you got to have a ticket and we'll, some of them are even free. I, I mean, you know, if we, if like Ryan would be coming to the shop or Royce or whoever, uh, those are just free, but we have tickets because we have a small place. We don't want to have 50 people show up when we have 26 seats. So we, we have a ticket, but if we post anything about the tickets, they'll be the same thing. Hey, uh, planned on going, I've got four extra tickets. I'll sell below right. cost. Oh. Uh, you know, if, if, if you send me a, a direct message, it's like, no, you don't, you don't have, yeah. well, first of all, I can see the roster who has tickets yeah, totally. over two. <laughs> the tickets are free in some examples. You know, you, you don't need to sell them a ticket. If someone wants a ticket, they can get one. Yeah, they're just, it's terrible. It's really yeah. terrible. The, the gist of this is if someone reaches out to you that you don't know, don't buy a bottle from them. No, no. So don't buy bottles just in general, for the most part, just from some random motherfuckers. Even like if they're in the same group as you, you don't <laughs> fucking know who they are. That should be the PSA for the bourbon industry. We'll just we'll capture like, that. Yeah. Don't so a random don't, motherfucker reaches out to you. If a random motherfucker reaches out, <laughs> do not buy bottles from them because well, I, they yeah. could either be fake or they're stealing your money. I have don't a do it. Question. Block yeah. Go ahead, Bo. I have a legitimate question though. Like, like you said, Steve, and I do believe this happens. Like legitimate liquor stores, I'm sure they they fall victim to. Oh yeah. Stuff. So other than as Becca put it, don't trust motherfuckers whatever but i mean how how <laughs> how do you police the, how does one go about policing the industry to where you're guaranteed no matter if you buy it at total wine or whatever that you're not getting that you are getting what you pay for right i think at the the big guys if you will the total wines of the world i i think the the chance of fraud is almost non-existent because again what you're making money for is not for uh an individual person you're making it for a big corporate entity nobody's going to be like hey come in here and uh if you i'll, I'll buy your your bottles from you and i'll put them on the shelf uh, no one uh, total wine's not doing that because again it's not a, a person who's so now uh again i know that uh, locally in St. Louis, there's some liquor stores that will buy liquor off of people and then sell it because I've had friends sell them liquor. Uh, that's just crazy to me. They're not allowed to do that, of course. But uh, so it happens out there. I, I mean, those those sort of things happen. Um, but and there's no way you could. You just have to know your retailer and hope and 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 know their integrity and 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 hope yeah. that they're not doing that kind of stuff. What sucks is like we're obviously obviously because we have a liquor store owner here. We're obviously not trying to d deter anyone from going to the mom right. and pop shops. Right. Obviously, exactly. that's not the intention. Right. I think the biggest thing is probably not buying from 
Facebook Marketplace and Bourbon Groups because that's I think where you'd probably find the most amount of illegal stuff. Right. Would be off of just random things like that. I mean, it definitely would happen at the smaller liquor stores, but not as uh, much as it would just online. Yeah, I, th- I think you, you know it's like anything. You have conversations with people. You get to know people, and that, that's that's going to be a good thing for you anyway. Go to the liquor stores where you know the owners, you trust the owners, and and once you find one you like, that's the one you give your business to. And I, I think that's that's also an important aspect too, and that that can pay off for you in the end. Uh, again, not at your your large chains because those all have uh, programs that are set up that uh, t- dictate to them how they they take care of things like allocated stuff and all that. But get to know your local liquor store and uh, yeah yeah find one that you like and trust and uh, that's the best thing that you can do for sure. But yeah, I, I would say zero percent of uh, Facebook you know transactions end up in a good thing when you don't know the person uh, again I would if it's somebody you know through Facebook and it's in a group where you, you've been interacting with them for years maybe but again I I don't know how how they're protecting themselves from getting swindled and then passing it along to you I mean even legitimate things like uh, the, the Kentucky vintage laws uh, again I'm less uh, concerned about the the truly vintage stuff because there's so many ways to tell whether or not uh, you know that is not that you can't fake that but it can be but I think it's it's a lot harder to do and uh, I think the upside is so much on you know uh, if I can if I can get a hundred empty bottles of Blanton's and refill that with something else I can get the the stuff to seal it in the right way um, yeah and I just go around and sell it to the various stores I'm not sure how how they how they could even know. Uh, the, again, the, the legitimate liquor stores that would buy that. that. That's the concerning thing is about the new ones that are worth so much money or the Pappy Van Wing. I get I buy 10 bottles off of uh, eBay and f- refill those and go sell those at legitimate liquor stores in Kentucky that can buy that stuff. I'm not sure they're going to know. I, I, you know, they're, they're passing along stuff that's, that's you know, fake that, that they probably wouldn't even know about. It. That's, it's, that's, well, that's I, stuff's I, tough. I still think the, un- the most unfortunate part of it is is – Okay, so with, with Van Winkles, you know, you're going back to Buffalo Trace. Buffalo Trace is almost Teflon across everything else. But I look at at Becca with Old Jet. At the end of the day, if somebody ended up buying that bottle of Old Jet before it is even released, and that person gets it and does it, guess who's going to be getting rained hell upon? It's going right. to be nearly distill, nearly family distillery, and that stuff. So you sold this to me. This is your product. How did you not? How how is this even getting out? You guys did something this, that, and the other. So there are some ways that some of the. I mean, you see it in the cigar market to as well with the, the high-end cigar markets are putting in holograms and they're, they're spending extra money on packaging and materials or serial number systems or RFID. They're doing these things to be able to legitimately check the vid- validity of the products that are out there. You see it as well with Buffalo Trace's serial numbers that are on these bottles. Now, you, if you're checking that, you know you're guaranteeing that the bottle is at some point in time was right. legit, not necessarily the stuff, but there's just other steps that are there that are really telltale signs. But Steve, I think you hit it best. Becca, you said as well. The mom and pop shops are in to make a profit on doing things. They're getting allocated just like everybody else. Everybody wants it because what's the first question you're getting every time you walk in? Or some some snotty little syndicate member calling the barrel shop every now and then, <laughs> leaving voice bills asking for Blantons yes. uh, and that stuff. You deal with that all day long. Well, at some point in time, you're going to get in the game. If you think it's legitimate, then you're going to get taken. And then that just that throws your credibility out the window at some point in time. Uh, I think consumers have got to be educated on some of this stuff and, and being somebody who's not industry to a certain extent, you got to know what you're buying and, uh, and go from there. If you're spending more than 50 bucks on, on a whiskey, I, I go down to 50 because the majority of my stuff that I have is all about 50 to 60 bucks and below, uh, mm-hmm. anything above that, you got to know what you're buying and know what's happening there. Uh, and, um, there's ways to do it and check it. You just got to be educated on it. But yeah, those random motherfuckers on Facebook marketplace. Don't believe them. That's the worst. Yep. Yeah. If someone's approaching you, uh, I would question that <laughs> right away. That's that's a red flag right there. Just like on the screen here. I'm just amazed at like. how attractive I am to other people out there. My dad bot is really hot, apparently. Oh, you know, with yeah. all the DMs those, that those I get, it's amazing. Stupid things. Yeah. Yes, uh, I love uh, it. Yeah. So, all right. On that note, we'll wrap this one up as we always do by talking about where people can find us. Tim, we're going to start with you. Where can people find you? You can find me on Instagram at swyguy2112. Bo. I am on the socials at uh, My Journey Through the American Spirit and Bourbon Sasquatch. Ryan. Across all socials at 10th MTN Whiskey. Our website is 10thwhiskey.com. That's 10th whiskey with an E. Miss Becca Sue. You can find me on Twitter and on Instagram at Miss Becca Sue, 1K, no C's. 
For me, I'm an easy guy to find. I'm at Steve Akeley on Twitter, Instagram, or Facebook. I've got a website, steveakeley.com. We've also got a company website. That's abvnetwork.com. Check it out. Everything that we do is out there. Previous shows, blogs, so much more, abvnetwork.com. Come by and see us, the ABV Barrel Shop. We'd love to talk to you about stuff that's not allocated because we don't have any of that stuff. So come by and see us. We'll talk to you about barrel picks and uh, inform you about those. Let you taste them more. Uh, at a minimum, sign up for email and text distribution at abvbarrelshop.com. Ms. Becca Sue, anything else to say before we get out of here? I'd just like to remind the audience to please give us a five-star review that includes comments. It helps new people find the show, which is very important to us. If you like what we're doing, we ask you to please visit our Patreon page at patreon.com backslash the ABV Network. Great job today, gang. For audience, we'll have a brand new show for you tomorrow. Looking forward to that. Until then, take care, everybody. See ya. Bye. Bye. See you guys. Before we finish the show, let's talk about some great companies that support the ABV network. First up is Moonshine Still Pro. Moonshine Still Pro has a full line of products to help the home distiller. Whether you want to experiment on the stove in your kitchen or you're looking for a bigger setup in your backyard, owner Russell Creed and his team can help. They have multiple still offerings, accessories, and even grain from their partners at Goldstone Mill to assist you in making whiskey on par with your favorite distillery. They can also help you with some fabricated parts you probably can't make yourself if you are attempting a DIY still project. Learn more or order your still or parts at moonshinestillpro.com. Last but not least is the ABV Barrel Shop. While we don't get to play in the allocated bourbon game because we aren't selling the other products you have to do to get those, we do have access via our friendships in the bourbon industry to some really cool stuff. Have you ever seen your favorite craft distiller selling some really cool limited offerings only in their gift shop? I'm talking things like the Hazmat offering Distillery 291 did for their 10th anniversary or Neely Family Distillery's Papaw's Birthday Barrel. They don't have enough of it to send it out to distributors, so they only sell it via their gift shop. Well, companies like Distillery 291 and Neely Family Distillery have agreed to sell us two or three cases of these offerings moving forward, meaning our store will have the access to some of the rarest whiskeys in the world. Way more difficult to come by than the allocated bourbon offerings with a national release. Yes, they will be extremely tough to come by, but if you're a customer of our store, you'll have a chance to get them. Get signed up for our email or text list over at abvbarrelshop.com so you don't miss out. The Bourbon Daily is part of the ABV Network. For more information or to become a sponsor, please visit abvnetwork.com. Thanks for listening and cheers. This has been a Steve Akeley production.